what would Snow White drive if she had to take six of her vertically challenged pals to work on a regular basis? On this edition of Test Drive, the Infinity JX35. The Infiniti JX35 is based on Nissan's D platform, the same one that underpins the Murano and Quest. This brings a number of advantages. Until its introduction, if you wanted to accommodate sleepy dopey Doc et al, the only Infiniti to fit the bill was the hulking QX. It's a monster and a brutal gas hog. The JX brings almost the same amount of interior volume without that attendant penalty. This very clever seat mechanism really does ease access to the third row seat. The problem is when you get back here, not very comfortable. The seat sits very close to the floor, which forces your knees up at an ugly angle, and there really isn't a whole pile of headroom. As third row seats go, it's about the same as most of them. You just have to think of this, an emergency place only. The JX35 is powered by Nissan's sweet three and a half liter V6. In this application, it spins out 265 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque. This is enough power to motivate the 2,005 kilograms of leather-lined opulence with the desired alacrity. The power is relayed to the road through a continuously variable transmission and all four wheels. The latter does a very good job of distributing the power to the wheels with grip in a seamlessly quick manner. I hate continuously variable transmissions or CVTs because of the motorboating effect. Basically, if you roll into the throttle, the engine goes up to about red line, and there it stays until either the driver submits or finally gets to his desired speed. Now this thing, it too has a CVT, but in this case, I could actually live with it because it has a true manual mode. That minimizes the oral assault on your ears. No, it doesn't do much for performance, but it sure does for peace and tranquility. Infiniti's drive mode selector allows the driver to choose between normal, sport, snow and eco modes. In all cases, the system remaps the throttle and alters the shift points according to demand. Forget the economy mode unless fuel economy is paramount. It softens things to the point where it feels like the driver's putting his boot in a bucket of porridge. Normal is just fine, the sport mode sharpens things and delivers a much more rewarding drive. Set in sport, the JX runs to 100k in 8.8 .8 seconds. Far from pulse quickening, but enough to keep up with the morning commute. The cabin of this JX35 has been finished off very nicely. Top quality materials, beautiful fit and finish, and if you add a couple of option packages, you get everything you could possibly want, all the way from a great sound system through to a navigation system. The ergonomics, again, equally good with one exception. Down by the driver's left knee, there's a whole bunch of buttons that are not easy to access. When it comes to the handling side of things, the JX35 feels as big as it looks. The softer, comfort-oriented suspension gives rise to a fair amount of body roll when the JX is pushed, and it tends to slip into understeer even if the driver gets mildly aggressive, and this is in spite of the oversized 235-55 R20 tires. Having explained all of that, given its crossover station in life, the JX handled pretty much as expected. It's sharper than the Buick Enclave and Lincoln MKT, but lagging the Acura MDX and Audi Q7 in terms of its overall handling. If you have the need to ferry six or seven passengers around on a fairly regular basis, this JX35 does it in style. It's also priced to sell. It starts at just under $45,000. However, if you want some of life's little luxuries, well, you've got to start adding packages. And some of those packages require the addition of a second package. In the end, this thing gets fairly expensive. This test vehicle, almost $13,500 worth of options on it. That moves the price from affordable to fairly pricey. 